Lambrusco, isn't that fizzy, cheap, red stuff that's gross? Well, yes and no. I'm gonna show you why you should be drinking Lambrusco. That's all coming up. Today is Lambrusco Day, so we are gonna drink some Lambrusco! Lambrusco's reputation was tarnished in the 1980s because there was such a high demand that so much cheap, sweet, inexpensive stuff was produced, and that's what stuck in the consumer's mind, but I'm hopefully gonna change that right now. Let's cut right to the chase. You should be drinking Lambrusco because the high quality examples are inexpensive and absolutely delicious. Lambrusco is a sparkling wine. They can either have a faint amount of bubbles or real vigorous bead. Lambrusco is confusing because it's the name of a grape variety or several grape varieties and a wine from central Italy, namely Emilia de Romagna, right in the heart of Italy. It's a region that's also home to some of Italy's greatest cuisine. I know every region in Italy has great food, but trust me, if you haven't eaten cuisine from Emilia de Romagna, as soon as the world clears up, get on a plane and check it out. And not only that, Lambrusco wines can be white, rosé, or red, but to me, the real Lambrusco is red. First of all, how do you decipher the labels for this confusing type of wine. You have to know most of the cheap sweet stuff is not even labeled as Lambrusco. It's labeled as Emilia IGT. There are four appellations or DOCs in Emilia Romagna that produce higher quality Lambruscos. And I'm not going to bore you with the names. I'm going to stick it right there. So if you really want to learn, pause the video and check them out right there. There's also one appellation in neighboring Lombardy that can make Lambrusco too. Good Lambrusco to me is dry. Just maybe a touch of residual sugar. Just a touch of tannin and it goes great with all the delicious tomato-based dishes in Emilia Romagna. Great wine for pizza, great wine for different types of pastas, any ham, charcuterie, you know, some hard cheeses. Ooh, Lambrusco is so good. It's fizzy. It helps clean the palate. So delicious. There are three levels of sweetness in Lambrusco. The first, the sweetest, the cheapest ones you're going to see are dolce. That means sweet, obviously. The next level is amabile, which is medium sweet. I have to tell you though, that's medium sweet in wine terms. So to most population, it's just going to be a sweet one. And then finally, you have my favorite category is secco, which are dry Lambruscos. If you take anything from this video, I'm urging you, urging you, please get out of the cheap, sweet stuff. Drink some higher quality Lambrusco. It's not going to cost you that much more. So let's get into it. First, I'm going to taste this Lambrusco I bought for three US dollars. This is available all around the world. This is the San Orsola Lambrusca Emilia IGT Rosso. This is sweet, hot tip. The lower the alcohol, usually the sweeter the Lambrusco is going to be. This is 7.5%. So I'm expecting, it doesn't say dolce anywhere, but I'm expecting it to be pretty dolce. I'm a little bit scared to taste this wine. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that most people are drinking. I thought it was gonna explode all over my computer. You can see that nice fizziness. Not not very deep color, just kind of a lighter red scarlet color. It's basically just smells like, there's this British drink called Ribena, which is basically like a sweet black currant type juice. That's what this smells like, nothing more. Just smells like red currant, black cherry. It's really all it smells like, nothing complex at all. This really tastes just like sparkling grape juice. <laughs> that's all it tastes like, and that's what people, that's what the perception of Lambrusco is. The front is okay, but what's wrong, this does taste like a $3 one. It's got this rotten grape type of flavors on the back end. Have you ever had those table grapes? Not the ones that are firm, but the ones that are soft, maybe starting to oxidize a little. They have kind of that rotten flavor. That's what you're going to get in this. I mean, for three bucks, you're not expecting much, but uh, please, please, please try to drink better quality Lambrusco than this. Oh, let's move on. <laughs> have to have a little sparkling water to wash, wash down that crappy wine. Sparkling water works so well as a palate cleanser. Hot tip, have sparkling water handy if you're tasting a lot of wines. And drink a lot of water if you're drinking, if you're having an evening drinking a lot of wines. Make sure you drink about a glass of water for every glass of wine that you're consuming. Next, we have two from this legendary producer, Cleto Chiali. This is one of the most famous producers of Lambrusco. You're going to be able to find these wines all over the place. This is the Centenario. This is from one of the higher quality appellations of Lambrusco. This is a Lambrusco Grasparosa di Castelvetro. Uh, this is an Amabile. This is a medium sweet wine. I hope it doesn't explode on me. Let's give this a go. Let's give this a go. <laughs> yes. It's got a much deeper color. Can't see my fingers through it. Now, this is definitely more intense on the nose. It, it still smells like kind of like that Rabina, the black currant juice, but you also get some violets, a hint of violets as well. This is a wine that retails around $13 in the US. Uh, you can also get it all around Europe, all over the world, really. This wine is pretty widely available. It smells pretty nice. 
Here's the difference between these two wines. At first, the cheap, the cheap Lambrusco, it tastes okay, but it has rotten flavors on the back end. This one, much more intense, much more concentrated type of flavors. This is almost like a thin gas station type coffee, whereas this is going to be more of a higher quality coffee that you're going to get from a trendy coffee shop, the more concentration flavors. Only 8% alcohol, so you can drink it all day. It's got a faint beat of bubbles to kind of refresh the palate. I know, big difference in price, like three, four dollars to thirteen. But I think the quality here is much, 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 much better. Something that I actually want to drink. Actually, you saw I didn't spit it because it's so delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I took my parents to Italy and Switzerland for one of their wedding anniversaries about five, six years ago. And we were in Bologna, in the heart of Emilia Romagna. My parents are not wine drinkers, but when they're with me, they don't complain at all. My mom only drinks Pepsi, full of sugar. I hate it. But we were in Bologna. We went down to the market, and I bought a bottle of Amabile Lambrusco, put it on the table, and then went out. I think I took a nap for a little bit. My mom was, you know, picking on some food. And when I came back out, she was drunk. She had drank the whole bottle of Lambrusco. I remember she said to me, she's like, this is better than Pepsi. <laughs> and next, this is the Cleto Chiali. Lambrusco del Fondatore. Uh, I'm really excited. This is a, a Secco. This is also from one of the most respected appellations of Lambrusco. This is Lambrusco di Sorbara. Ooh, so excited. A little bit lighter in color, almost like a rosé. Mm. This smells a little like where the other sweeter Lambruscos just smell like sweet kind of grape juice. This smells a little bit more quote unquote like wine. Little notes of strawberry, white pepper. There are some complexities here, maybe a little bit of rose petal. The nice thing though, these Lambrusco, what's nice about Lambrusco or these are wines not to fuss over. They're just to enjoy. They're just to drink. They're share with family and friends. A lot of people will like this type of wine, even people that don't like wine. However, there are some complexities in some good dry Proseccos that people will really appreciate. Rolling it at 11.5% alcohol, so just a little bit more boozy. So for those of you that are drinking a lot of cheap Lambrusco, dry Lambrusco is going to be a completely new experience. There's a subtle hints of strawberry notes up front, and there is a little bit of tannin here. I actually can see a lot of people maybe not liking this kind of Lambrusco. They maybe want a little bit more residual sugar. For me, personally, I think this style is going to go great with a lot of different vegetables, fried, no, fried in olive oil, what you're going to see in Emilia Romagna. Emilia Romagna is famous for tagliatelle, Bologna, Bologna, <laughs> Bolognese. <laughs> Ugh, my Italian so bad. Basically pasta with meat sauce, a lot of other tomato dishes, vinaigrette, vegetables dipped in vinaigrette. I can see just going really well with this. Mmm. Another hot tip, I think Lambrusco, I think dry Lambrusco is something that's going to be great with Thanksgiving dinner. Anytime you have turkey, duck, you have some cranberry sauce, you can see the dry Lambrusco just going perfectly. So Lambrusco offers such a wide range of price points, everything like we saw here from 3 to 4 US dollars all the way up to 23 although I think the 13 to 15 US dollar range is where you're going to find the most value. So let me know, are you part of the Lambrusco revolution? Drop it down there in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. And if you're thinking of what to watch next, I'm going to throw something up there that you'll like. And I'll see you soon.